This weekend we got the release trailer for the pre-buy from Heat Blur for their F4 Phantom 2 and just like in Heat Blur fashion everything is amazing. You gotta remember that Heat Blur set the bar high with the F14 Tomcat as far as detail model interior and exterior uh, it's like one of the most beautiful aircraft in DCS world and one of the things that really in, impresses me as a former Air Force uh, air crew life support now called air crew flight equipment specialist is the level of detail with the flight equipment so just like I did with the F-15 Strike Eagle I'm gonna go through and do the same type of analysis from this trailer clip I'm gonna do a review of the flight equipment based on what I've been able to glean from this trailer Of course I don't have the aircraft uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna buy it yet uh, it is a beautiful bird but I'm not into the Gen 3 Gen 3 plus Gen 3 5 aircraft so so I'm gonna go through and go through the equipment uh, show you guys some of the things that I noticed with the equipment it is not designed to bash heat blur this is not a critical uh, of heat blur uh, as as all of this is a work in progress this is just to point out what I'm observing uh, and I'd like to get your comments below the flying scenes are just amazing as they are in all DCS trailers to me but this video is mostly going to be about heat blurs equipment as far as the inside of the aircraft and most of the clips that I used from the trailer for this video are going to be showing the sections that show mostly the inside now the big part of this video is going to be the slideshow at the end so I hope you guys stick around and watch that but I'll let you finish watching this from heat blur uh, it's truly an amazing product and I hope you guys enjoy Hey guys, thanks for staying this long. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Juice. For over 20 years, I was an air crew safety and survival specialist in the United States Air Force, working in various jobs in the survival and rescue world. And one of my main jobs was to maintain and issue and fit air crew flight equipment. Uh, and I worked with three different generations of air crew equipment when it came to helmets and masks and I'll talk about that a little bit in this slideshow and everything uh, again let me just say that that heat blur always hits a home run anything that they put out is going to be golden uh, and this is just to point out some of the things that I've noticed about the equipment and I hope you guys notice some things too and maybe uh, put that in the comments a lot of the stuff that we're going to see in this review is going to cover the flight equipment, but I will do a video in the future covering the Martin Baker Mark 7 ejection seat, and I'll talk a little bit about that from my experience working on RF4Cs, which is a different version of the F4, uh, but uses basically the same type of escape system. For more information on that, definitely go over to the ejection site, and you guys, I'll put a link in the description below. So, this video is going to be about the flight equipment and what we saw in the preview trailer. These are screen captures that I grabbed from the trailers. Uh, and you guys can see there that uh, General Olds is there with his mustache all in fashion. Actually, that's probably a little bit more in regs than he normally would wear it at. Uh, but it, what I want to talk about is the difference in the flight equipment uh, and some of the disparities that I'm seeing in this. Now, here is the HGU 2P. Uh, which was the Vietnam helmet at the time, and it was uh, superseded 
pretty soon before I came into the Air Force by the HGU 26P, and we'll t we'll talk about the 26P in a, in a little bit. Um, and then, but this right here, the helmet is really small. It's a, it's a lot bigger helmet than this, and I, I do know that they tried to make the fighter helmets a little bit smaller uh, with the weight you know, the visor, a single visor and stuff like that. But we'll talk about that. Uh, I just think the size proportionate and either that or Robin Olds has a really big head. And I got this from bestofflightgear.dk. I appreciate those guys for what they do. Uh, if I'll put their link in the description below so you can go check them out. Now, this is the HGU 26P single visor. And this is what probably most of the F4E guys would have worn post-Vietnam prior to the HGU 55P, which is the lightweight gray helmet that you see. And I remember working on these. As a matter of fact, we used to have to do, when we'd get them at Kadena in the F-15 days, this is back in the F-15Cs when they were brand new, we used to have to get uh, these visors uh, would come stock and we'd have to grind them out with what, what we, we basically would call it a Dremel tool. Now, a little grinder tool that we would grind out these gull wing designs on the visor so that they'd get a little bit extra visibility when they looked up. Uh, because that little straight line going across there where you see, basically right there, where you see that is going to block some of the vision and stuff. So we would do this mod before we'd mount it on the helmet and everything. Here's what it looks like with the mod done and sanded out really nice and everything. And the other thing that I'd like to point out is... I was expecting for an F4E uh, that that exited service. You know, the 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 G model was the last model I believe that they made for the U.S. Air Force. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Tell you F4 guys definitely jump in on this. Uh, but the MBU 5P mass was in when I came in, and we had basically I've seen four different masks. We've had the MBU 5P, which is this here, and it had a two-piece hard shell, soft shell part that went together after we'd clean them and, and, and disinfect them and everything. We'd put them together and these were designed, if you look right here, I'll move my mouse over here, but these were designed so that you could see right here with these two little uh, nape holes right here, uh, not nape holes, but nose, uh, nose bridge holes where you could go in and this is where you would reach in and push in the Valsalva when you had to relieve pressure in your ears and everything. But one of the things you'll notice is the straps on this, once it's fit to the pilot, all these straps are tacked with 8-4 cord so that they don't slip up. And that's one of the things you'll see in the trailer is the mask has no tackings, which is not realistic in, in my opinion. Now, as I, as I mentioned, this is the HGU, HGU 26P with the MBU 5P mask. Um, here's the visor mod. Here's the bayonet receivers. Now, this bayonet, this, this angle shows it a little bit uh, better than the, what it shows in the, in the trailer. But I'll, I'll point those out when we get to the trailer pictures and everything. Um, but as you can see, there's the mass taskings right there. So here's the picture that they show in the trailer that I grabbed. Uh, I'm sure they, we can find this on their website too. Uh, but it shows General Olds in his Vietnam flight suit, Vietnam uh, harness and survival vest uh, with his uh, bolt knife. We used to call that the bolt knife because the, the top of it has a bolt shape there. And he's wearing a mid 1980s to all the way up to early 90s uh, flight helmet and mask, which is not really realistic. As a matter of fact, when the MBU 12P, this is this mask here, when it first came out, uh, for the first few years, we could only get green. The gray ones didn't come out until later. Uh, they're made by Gentex, and Gentex has a website that has a lot of information, and I'll put their link in the description as well. Uh, so. I can see already that the angle, and it might be the angle of the camera on this, but the angle of these uh, bayonet receivers uh, and the bayonets from the mask is off. It does look like it is set to the proper depth for the second click. There's four clicks that they go through, and we set it at the middle of the second click so that they can have, if it's too tight, if, the, if somebody gains a little weight, they can click in once. Um, they're supposed to go in twice, and then if they have a problem uh, where they, they lose weight, and we don't have a chance to refit their mask, we can go ahead and have them uh, reset it and we can readjust it and tack it and everything. Here's the mask tackings that I was telling you about or lack of mask tackings that should be in there. Once these are folded over, once they're fit to the pilot and it's going to be his assigned equipment, we would fold these over. Even on incentive flights, we would tape these straps so they wouldn't slip during the flight. Uh, I said this before uh, in other videos on flight equipment, but 
this one right here really has a mix of generations. Uh, when you're, you're looking at mid to late 80s helmet and mask, but it's late 1960s to mid 1970s flight suit and survival equipment. And one of the things you'll have to realize too is General Olds retired in 1973, so he would not have flown with the HGU 55P or the 12P mask. He would have flown with the, at least uh, the 2P and the 26P and everything. So, And so, guys, this is just some of my observations. I'd like to see what you guys notice, especially you former flight equipment guys, Navy riggers. Put in there what you guys have seen in the trailer and what you like about the DCS World equipment as it's shown in our trailers and our, in our modules that we get. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you in the next video.